You are watching TFI. Greetings, if this dog allows me to. I'm going to model a turbo compressor impeller in Fusion 360. I've just done the video in Autodesk Inventor, and I thought, you know what, why the hell not? Let's do it in Fusion 360 as well. Uh, it's almost the same workflow. Not entirely quite, but almost the same. So uh, it's just pretty much a rinse and repeat in Fusion 360. So uh, let's get cracking, mate. Uh, I'm probably going to now end up doing it with this dog perched on my shoulder like a parrot, which uh, is absolutely not a first. But let's uh, let's hop on over to Fusion 360, get myself out of the way, and let's do it, mate. Uh, this might be difficult one-handed, given that I'm perched... Why don't here's an idea? Why don't I just put the dog on my lap? That, that would be an idea, wouldn't it? Right, dog is away. Okay, let's get cracking, mate. So it's an empty part, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, well, I suppose I should. I suppose I should explain this before I start. Most of the stuff that we're doing uh, this tutorial, I've just done it in the Inventor one, is a fairly advanced stuff. But that's kind of good because it lets you dabble. You know, if you follow along, it lets you dabble with some of the the stuff that you wouldn't have otherwise encountered. So. I'm not a Fusion 360 expert either. I, I am in with Inventor in Fusion 360 to some degree. It's just a copy and paste. Uh, but I'm not massively 100% sure when or where all the buttons are. Like, uh, I'm looking for the line button. And I can't see where the goddamn line. I've got to create a sketch first. That's a good start, mate. Right, let's uh, let's get cracking. So we're going to start with a sketch on the uh, on the bottom plane. And we're going to create a center point circle from the middle. And uh, it's quite a small part, this one. Uh... I'm not going to go through the story of why it's so small again. I've just literally done that. Uh, you can go and watch the Inventor one if you're interested. It's not really that much of a fascinating story. But uh, there we go. So it's 26 mil in diameter. You know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to turn the camera off from being perspective. And would you believe it? The dog's just farted. It absolutely stinks. That's that's rotten. Uh, right. Anyway, I can't deter me. I'm not going to start this again. So we're going to go up. Extrude by one mil, so it's quite a, it is indeed a very small part. And then we're going to knock a sketch up through that middle plane there, slice the graphics, and then uh, we're going to try and project. Do I need to project or will Fusion automatically project? Let's just say Fusion will automatically project. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Right. We're going to create a line up by 10 mil, up that way, and then we're going to come out on the horizontal uh, by 3 mil. And uh, that should be enough for now, just to make sure that that's not going to move. I can drag it away. No, nope, well, we're fully constrained. Champion, mate. Champion, read. So we're going to then drop into an arc, three-point arc, here on the end point to roughly about there. Pull off, and then we'll just leave it there. Second arc is going to be from this bottom corner to that end point there, and then roughly about there. Right then. So, the next thing I need to do is knock out some constraints to get this arc in place. Because this uh, profile is going to be just a sweeping arc, but it can't be just with the position of the endpoints. It can't be one arc, it has to be two in this instance. So, uh, let's, uh, let's knock out a tangent constraint between that arc and then this bottom edge here. I want a tangent constraint between the two arcs. Uh, and then, well, you shouldn't have bounced off there, mate, because you were snapped at the endpoint. So, I need to coincidentally drop him under the empire really fusion you got is there even a line there well that would probably explain why the ha what the heck happened there never mind right three mil return return All right coincident constraint between there and there that'll do it mate that'll do it right so this arc still free to move there should be one constraint still required yep 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 in inventor i was able to do a perpendicular constraint between the arc and the line there but it uh, fusion doesn't like that so instead what we're going to do is knock out a, uh, a construction line up on the vertical and then tangent that line to that arc there we go right that's now fully constrained in place happy as the boy Larry good to go right stop that sketch jump into a revolve and I'm gonna pick up that profile and then revolve it around its uh, it's kind of its own axis like that and that gives us the, the main body of the impeller and drop a sketch on the bottom face, this one here, and we're going to knock out uh, a fit point spline, or an interpolation spline, as it's called in Inventor, and we're going to create it between there, to roughly there, to roughly there, and then into the middle, and then tick on that, and I need to sort the handles out, because they're, uh, they're a bit wonky, so I just need to straighten that one up a little bit, just so that the spline exits smoothly. 
and then we'll do the same thing up here we'll grab that handle and then we'll just grab it like that so it's sort of entering the midpoint smoothly this spline is going to be the center line of the the blades on the turbo impeller so uh yeah it's very approximate you can drop dimensions down if you you know if you actually do one of these and you're making one of these you can uh firm them up with some dimensions but uh i'm obviously i'm not making it physically right and stop that sketch and then i need to jump into surfacing create a, a surface extrude on that and then we're gonna we're gonna pull it up nah come on come on just need that spline man there we are right grab him that's better so we're gonna extrude that up as a extruded straight surface like this all right uh 10 mils probably enough yeah, I wish we really should be referencing it off the top face to say, uh, you know, one mil off the top face rather than just a straight 10. It's kind of bad practice to do that because then if you made a design change to the impeller and you reduced the height of the, the center section, then you'd want that to come down with it. But the way I've done it, it won't. I'm consciously aware of that. But um, we're just, we're doing enough, I suppose. Right, and then we're going to go into create form. And then uh, the button I'm looking for is called Convert. It's in here somewhere. This is uh, one of my bugbears with Fusion. Love Fusion. It's great. These menus, horrible. Absolutely, it's horrible. I mean, this is un this is just way too much. Just eyes looking, 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 looking for a word. It's not even there, is it? No, it's probably is it in here. Create. Nope. Utilities. There it is. Convert. Right. So we're going to convert that surface into a freeform plane subdivided four by four that should be enough and then that's our starting canvas for creating the blade so the way i'm going to do this is i'm going to delete oh, give me a clue there yeah, delete that 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 and that and that gives us this sort of staggered profile here for the blade and i'm going to repeat delete and then select that point and then that gives us this nice sweeping profile up here, uh, which you can you can modify this uh, once the the blade's thickened out and it's converted into an actual blade. You're free to pull this around to be as sweeping and as curved as you want. But now I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try something, uh, which may or may not work. You see the problem here that I've got. Right, I need to bend this section of the blade. Uh, let's go into this ed this point here. Let's move into world space. You see what happens, right? When we drag this, we get this weird sort of bend on the edge. Now there may be ways of resolving that and straightening it out, but I've just I've just kind of got an idea which I want to see if I'm going to run with and see if this works. I'm going to knock a construction plane offset down one mil, which should take it exactly on top of the free form. Plane. I'm not sure what's going on here. This is a bit ugly. Uh, right, okay on that. All right, sketch on there, and I'm going to draw a straight line coming out to about here. I think. Hopefully that's not too much of a bend. It might possibly be. Let's uh, just grab it a little bit and maybe maybe about there. Right. Let's go back in. Oh, I need to grab the free form and move it here. Right, let's edit the free form. I just want to see if this works. Right, I want to go into match. See if I can match these edges to that. that oh my god, that 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 was good. That, that was that was good. If I do say so myself, that was pretty good. So that's matched that edge right to the sketch, and it's given us this perfectly razor sharp fan blade edge. Love that. That was awesome. Right, let's grab this edge here and just pull it out a little bit so there's a bit more of a bend on that blade there we go and uh, I mean you could start just tweaking it a bit more if you wanted it to be a bit more flowing you can grab some of the edges and start tugging them around I've, I've got the feeling that if I start trying to do that I might make a bit of a mess of it I think that's probably okay fell slightly off there but it's still straight enough right that'll do for now i'm happy with that right we're going to finish that okay i'm done with let's go into bodies which one is that i think it's that one there i'm done with that one yeah it's not exactly a uniform th uh, thickness all the way through but 
you know, I'm not physically making this. I'm not too concerned about that. I don't need that sketch anymore. All right, then let's go into a thicken. Where you at, mate? Where you at? Thicken. Is it in create or is it in modify? It's in create. All right, I'm going to pick up that free form. I want a new body, 0 0.2. I mean, this is extraordinarily thin, uh, but it's just the size. I probably should have scaled this up a little bit. 0 0.2 thickness for a blade is uh, ludicrously small, but uh, that's it is what it is. Right. So that's given us the main body of the blade. What I then need to do is pull the uh, the face out. So press pull, will that be that? Yes, okay, let's pull this out by a couple of mil. And then, and then I want to go into surface and then extrude that edge up. Here's a new body, fine. Back into the solids. And then I want to split that using that. Probably best to extend that. And that gives me this extra body here, which I can just turn off. And then I can turn that off. And then that's it's almost replicating it being kind of milled in a strain you know, on the on the curvature there. That's that's good. Happy with that. And then I want to combine the two of them, that and that. There we go. This is this is coming together quite nicely, right? Fillets. Oh, it's very small, so we'll go for a point one. How do I do this infusion? If I've got to hold shift down to pick extra edges, control, control. Right. Let's pick all of these up, and hopefully it computes all my fillets. The uh, the the patchwork quilt type effect down here is sometimes problematic but no that seems to have done it quite well we'll just leave it as a g1 fillet happy with that and there you are mate look at that look at that yeah don't worry about the patchwork quilting because it the, the 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 face is continuous it's just where the the freeform plates were kind of intersecting uh that's not ideal there but um, yeah, if I was if this was a production part, I would go back in and start trying to tidy up the points and whatnot. But it solved the fillet, so it's, it's happy enough with it. Right, let's go into a pattern. I need a circular pattern. Uh, I want to pattern the entire. Oh, it's just pattern the body. Axis will be uh, red X Z Y. Right, so origin will be the Y axis for the pattern. And I want to create 19 of them, mate, because this is, uh, oh, hell yes. Hell yes. Right, and then we're going to knock a sketch on top of here. This is going to be the uh, opening for the shaft. Ladies, uh, stop that sketch. And then extrude him as a cut. Do I pick a cut or does Fusion just do it? Fusion just does it. Okay. And then I want to extrude to an object. That'll be that one there. And there we are, mate. There we are. To be fair, you can probably tell I've got little to... Well, I, I can't say none because I have used it before, but my experience with Fusion is minimal. I used it once about three years ago to model up an alloy wheel. I haven't used it since really to do anything meaningful. I've opened it up and looked at the interface and passed comment on the interface, but... To be able to model up something like this, having not used it for three years, is a credit to Fusion, really. It just goes to show how easy it is to transition from Autodesk Inventor to Fusion and back again. If uh, you need a two for whatever reason. And then there you go, mate. There's your turbo impeller. Let's do a little keyway thingy rectangle. I want a center rectangle. There we are. Right. Oh, I should have put the dimensions in. Pop them up for... Uh, as I was making it, never mind, never mind. These should all be parametrically linked to, <laughs> to the circle, but never mind, never mind. I'm not overly concerned. Fortunately, it's not a production part. Oh, okay, you're not picking up all of the profiles. Fine, fine, that's fine. Let's go down by 0.5. Oh, it's frozen. Why are you frozen? Don't freeze on me. Crash crush and I'll end you. What's it doing? Why is it just done that? 
What's it done? Why is it doing? Oh, okay. Uh, negative 0.5. There we go, mate. There we are. Right, there we are. That's it. There's your Fusion 360 designed turbo impeller slash compressor, which you can now do what you want with, mate. Go off and render it. Save it out to a STL file, 3D print it, export it out straight, and in inject it right into your 3D printing software. Cam it, do what you want, mate. I'm impressed with that. That's awesome. Or if you've just if you've got a 3D mouse, you can just just spin it because <laughs> it just looks awesome. I love it. I love it. Oh, I need to get out more. All right, mate. Uh, thank you very much. That'll do it for now. Uh, if you're new to the channel, because I don't do many Fusion 360 videos, uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see us do more of them. And sub up to reaffirm your commitment to wanting me to do more Fusion... Oh, no, that was a shogun. Uh, but yeah, no, just uh, sub up. Because that's the only way. And uh, drop a like, put a comment on the, on the video. It's the only way I really know if anyone actually wants to see Fusion 360 videos. The channel's built on Autodesk Inventor, but... Happy to do Fusion 360 stuff. The original idea for this video came from someone in the TFI Discord server, which is a Patreon perk. So if you want to get into the Discord server, uh, you have to sign up through Patreon. Link is in the description of the video and at the end of the uh, the post roll thingy-ma-bob thingy-doobly-doo. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Do